What's up, everybody? Jason here for JazzBeastCaseBreaks.com. 2022 Tops Finest Baseball 8-Box Case Break Pikachu number 5. Uh, Pikachu number 1, sorry, not number 5. Just hold up. And again, guys, first case. Here we go. Now, again, if you have a little character set, it means you want it from a team random. There was only three teams a part of this one. The second one, number 2, has a lot of them, so... Everybody else bought in straight up, so thank you, guys. We got a glimpse of Finest through our uh, quad case break earlier today. Pretty nice stuff. Uh, just one case, though, so it's not like we've seen too much of it here. So I'm looking forward to, obviously, doing another case here and then with number two. But uh, happy that we got a couple in on release day, though. So we'll rip four at a time. We'll go through the four, and then we'll go through the next four after that. But of course, same same class again, 2022. So we're looking for Julio's, Wanders. You know, obviously some vets in here with like Trout, Judge, probably. Of course, some good colors. It's all about the colors as well again here in this product. My picks for the NFL weekend, just straight up, no money line. I mean, no, uh, no, no, no spread or nothing like that. Just, I guess, money line. I think it'd be cool to see the Jaguars upset the Chiefs, but I think the Chiefs are a little too much for them. 
especially, you know, playoff time. So, I think the Chiefs should win. Now, the Bills, Bengals, that's a really tough one for me. I think either or, of course, are going to win. <laughs> well, one of them has to win. But, um, I, I think uh, Cincinnati goes in to Buffalo and beats them. And they move on. As long, and for me, I'm confident my Eagles should win. Uh, so, obviously, I'm picking the Eagles. There's a possibility they lose, right? Just like anybody else, but I feel like they should win. And then again, another toss-up for me. I, I think the Cowboys are going to upset. And even though it's crazy to say that's an upset, but it is, right? The 49ers, I just... Uh, inside me, I'm a big Eagles fan. I don't want the Cowboys to, to go on, but... Um, I, I think they're going to beat the 49ers. So, I think that's what I'm picking, man. I don't want it to happen, though. I'm going to root for the 49ers, but I think uh, if I had to choose, I think the Cowboys are going to go into San Francisco, Santa Clara, and beat the 49ers. But I hope I'm wrong on that one. What do you got, Brody? What are you thinking? All right, guys. Here we go. Brian De La Cruz auto for the Marlins. Going to Patrick Davis. Jaron Duran. And then we got a George Springer. Blue to 250. Benya Refractor, Gavin Sheets, you feel like the only game not to be close is the Jags game, and really the game should be a shootout. Yeah, it's fair to think that, you know, and I mean for Jaguar fans, don't be offended, obviously, you know. You're just going up against the Chiefs, number one seed, and against Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. I mean, it's, especially with the inexperience. But again, Trevor Lawrence has been played in big games or has played in big games before. So I mean, I don't think that's going to be the reason why. Charlie Blackman, but you know, Jaguars are not too far off though. I think, man, I think they proved that that they have a solid young team. So the future's bright, you know. Dougie P coaching up Trevor Lawrence with that offense was great. Your life depends on it. You're going to go Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Eagles. Again, that don't matter to me. As long as my Eagles win, it doesn't matter who they play. <laughs> Joe Carter, autograph. For the Blue Jays. Salvador Perez. Bobby Witt. Bobby Witt. And a blue Reed Detmers. And Andrew Jones, this is like a veteran box. Joe Carter, not Andrew Jones. Look at that smile. <laughs> Braves, that is going to TJ. Well, Tani Refract is nice. And we got Francisco Lindor to 75. I mean, that's, that's just how I feel too, man. I think they have to play a perfect game and they have to somehow 
have Jalen Hurts play like he played in, in against Tampa Bay the year before, you know, uh, as his first year as a starter. I just don't see that happening. You know, I think it would be a closer game maybe, but, you know, people are just bringing up, oh, well, you know, the rest of the starters, week 18. And, but, yeah, I mean, the Eagles played them like two weeks before that, and, and they beat them pretty good at home, so. I don't know. I just I just know that they play in New York. Daniel Jones, the hype. Everybody wants to see that go well, as they should, you know. Big city market team succeeding, beating their division rival. But I don't I just don't get the whole like they're rolling in hot. I mean they beat the Vikings, great. They should have beat them the first time, but they didn't. But it's not like they're like the giant uh, San Francisco 49ers going in like on a ten game winning streak into the playoffs. Ryan Mountcastle. But again, I mean, I could be wrong, and then the Giants just stomp my Eagles. I, j I just don't see that happening, you know? I just don't see that happening, so. I don't I don't, I don't, don't really like to say anything bad about other teams. It's just more, like, pretty realistic for the most part. But I kind of like how you said it, you know? That they play near a perfect game, basically. And I think Hurts would just be fine, too. I don't think he's going to have any any limitations. He's going to play out there like he wasn't injured. We got Drew Ellis. I think the one question mark I probably have is, like, Lane Johnson. I mean, he's going to tough it through, uh, pulling that muscle tendon in his in his abdomen. You know, so I don't know how, how effective he's going to be, but he's going to play, obviously. Eloy Ramos. So I don't know. Is, is it going to be a bad thing? Like, is, is he going to let up a little bit and, like, cave and go around him? Or, you know. So that's that's my only little concern is how how is he going to look. Bryson Stott. And a Tory Hunter. Nice. We're getting a lot of veterans in this one. Nice one there from Minnesota. Jonathan India. But if anything, I'm happy that the division is really strong right now. I mean, I think the Commanders could have played a little bit better this season, but, you know, the fact is that... Uh, you could have potentially almost had all the whole division make the playoffs. You know, that's, that's it's great. So, I'm just happy that our division is not, like, a joke. I mean, it could change. <laughs> the next year, it's all over again. But I think all the teams will be competitive. And who knows, man? What if Lamar Jackson just moves over uh, a couple miles away from uh, Baltimore to Washington, you know? Well, not really a couple of miles. It's probably like, what, 30, 40? But you know what I mean? Like, what if that happens? Or is it like 30, 40 miles? It's pretty close, though. I feel like when I went to Philly, it was like... It was like two-hour drive about there, so... Eh, maybe they're like 40 miles. What if... What if imagine he goes to the Commanders? What, what happens there? <laughs> then you have Lamar Jackson in our division? I don't know if that's a real possibility, but... That's what happens, Chad, when you don't believe in my Eagles. Card gods are just punishing you now. Just joking. I don't know. I feel like the first half of uh, the case I did on uh, the 4Caster wasn't really too eye-popping. And then the second half was much better. This one's had a lot of vet stuff, though. Chad, I'd have to look, actually. I might have sleeved up a base or two. Pretty sure I did. He has base cards in this, right? 
I did ba I did sleeve up a lot of Julio though, I will say. At least like five. But I actually wasn't paying attention too much. That case on the four caser was basically like a Bobby Witt case. Had a couple of numbered colors and then it had that green auto. No, no. It was a, like I just mentioned, it was a Bobby Witt case. That one. That one had like a Bobby Witt blue, a Bobby Witt purple, and then it had a Bobby Witt autograph green. So that one was more like a Royals rookie case. Yeah, well, that's the one thing. I think Baltimore, if they don't strike a deal, they can franchise tag him, right? And then if somebody wanted to trade for him, I mean, the Ravens still kind of own him. Because he's not a restricted free or unrestricted free agent, right? I mean, so uh, it's a little tricky there, I guess. But yeah, imagine Lamb Jack and a Ray Falcons uniform for you. It's like Michael Vick point five. I don't know. Lamar Jackson was playing great football in between his injury. But like it was kind of like Judge, how they both kind of banked on themselves, and it just sucks that he got injured. Yeah, it's crazy how some teams are structured like that, though, right? I mean, look at the 49ers, right? Seems like they just need any quarterback. <laughs> They're so good that they, they don't really need a Patrick Mahomes on their team. You know, put playmakers around a quarterback and have a solid defense. And as long as your quarterback utilizes all his playmakers, or at least the offensive coordinator, the play callers, you know, make it easy for him, then you don't really need a Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen kind of quarterback which I think is a great system but that's not how every team can be run though you know there are, are a lot of teams in the majority of the NFL that rely on their quarterback being a superstar you know not to throw anything out on Purdy but you know that's just with that kind of team and the offense and defense I mean kind of just need to not make mistakes it's like the Eagles honestly I mean I think the Eagles offense rolls. You know, Gardner Minch had a good game per se against the Cowboys, just not a really good game at all since the Saints, but it just goes to show you, of course, we're one of those teams too. If, if Jalen Hurts doesn't play, most likely we have no, no shot, you know. Although the team is solid, but I think I think a lot of people underestimate how much Jalen Hurts actually really does to the Eagles offense. From being from his accuracy to decision making and of course being a dual threat quarterback to run.
Yo Park for the Pirates. William Jones. Lou Bob. I think they do, right? I mean, unless they somehow move on from Fields, which I don't think that's happening. I think they might have announced as Rexit not too long ago. I think the best thing is to move back. And they probably won't even move back that far. Maybe just a couple picks. And then, you know, maybe get a, a future first rounder or two just by moving back a couple picks. And they'll still be in position to, to draft a great player. So that's what I would do, especially if you don't need a quarterback. Because this is a really good quarterback class, so... Already just with those two, Stroud and, and uh, the kid from Alabama. So, All right, Diblin to 25. Let let the other players or other teams that want to overpay for those guys, you know, trade with you. Get Brian Hayes. There's Wander. Bobby Wood Jr. Refractor. Bryson Stott. I love that that's what the Eagles did, right? They got the first round pick from the Colts from Carson Wentz last year. They didn't need the second pick, really, so they traded it to the Saints, and they really needed it. And I think they ended up using it for one of their players. I don't know if it was... I think it wasn't a lot. It was another player they got. And then they traded us their first rounder this year. And then look at that. It's going to be a top ten pick, and... You know, Eagles have now two first rounders. And one of them will be a top 10 pick. The other one will be potentially a low draft pick. But they may trade out of the 10 one or the, the, the 20s one or 30s, whatever they land. And maybe trade back and get another first round pick next year. Luis Gill, Yankees. Perez. Cruz, Torque. Montero. And Reed Devers for the Angels. Angels is Brian. Jacob DeGrom to 250. Corey Seager to 50 with a Julio. Lane Kershaw with the Dodgers. And another Luis Auto. This time it's a blue to 150. Yankees. That is going to Matt Smith. Gold Ronald Acuna Jr. Going to TJ. 2 of 50. Another wander. Shohei Otani for the Angels to 175. And Jesse Winker. Cincinnati Reds. And a Julio. Nice color. Seattle Mariners. To one two fifty. Wonder Franco finest rookies. Trout. They're probably gonna try their best not to, but if he's not, if he's gonna ind indicate that he's not gonna resign or anything like that, then yeah, they'll trade him for the whole mother load. Alright, here we go, guys. Last box. Suzuki. Nice orange. 
Chicago Cubs going to Rick Thomas. 20 out of 25. Ooh, Redemption. Redemption! Is that a Julio, maybe? Is Julio alive or is he not? Pete Alonzo. Hunter Green. Bummer. Nothing against Hunter Green, though. Wander and then Jaron Duran. And Marcos Diplan. Gavin Sheets. And yeah. You must have seen enough of this, Jay Nice. <laughs> Hunter Green for the Cincinnati Reds. Patrick Davis. And there you go, folks. That was the eight box case. A lot of autos right here. Nice colors. A little bit more vets than anything, but nice little Hulu there at the end. And of course, a lot of colors and rookies of Wander and Julio, but no autos for those guys. So appreciate it, guys. Next one's coming up next, number two.